I will first make sure that my parking brake is engaged. Next, I will put my foot on the service brake. And then I will turn the master switch two clicks to the right and immediately check the telltale panel for the ABS light. The light should turn on and then off, indicating that the ABS system is working. I will verify that the bus is in neutral via the transmission panel. And then I will push the push starting button till the engine turns on. Moving on to the windshield, I want to verify that it is securely mounted and not damaged. It is clean and free of obstructions, except for an inspection sticker. The mirrors are securely mounted and are clean, operational, not missing or broken, and are adjusted to me. I can see alongside and behind my bus. The wiper arms and wiper blades are securely mounted and not damaged. Using the wiper switch, I can verify that the wiper is white, and pushing down on the switch, I can verify that the washer is washed. The heater and defroster work on all three fan speeds. The toggle switches for the heat and floor selections are located on the left. You do not have to operate these for your actual test. The horn, when pressed, works properly via an audible sound. On the left floor panel, you will find toggle switches for your light indicators. The bottom left is for your left turn signal, bottom right, right turn signal, top right is for your high beams. As you operate each toggle switch, verify that the light works on the telltale panel, left, right, and high beams. I will verify that there is proper documentation in the glove compartment on the bus. I will also check for the fire extinguisher and make sure it is securely mounted and fully charged. Mine is not, it's located on this back panel back here. But all is well, it is still fully charged. And I also have three red reflective triangles. I will now conduct a two-part series of brake tests, starting with the parking brake. With my foot on the service brake, I will verify that the parking brake is engaged. The parking brake is engaged by it being in the up position. I will also check the transmission panel to make sure the bus is in neutral. Once I know it is in neutral, I will put the bus in drive. Once the bus is in drive, I will take my foot off of the service brake the bus should not move. If the bus does not move, that indicates that the parking brake is working properly. Moving on to part two, the service brake test, I will put my foot back onto the service brake. Next, I will disengage the parking brake, which means I will push the parking brake down. I will then check the transmission to make sure that the transmission is in drive. Putting the bus in drive, I will allow my foot to come off the service brake and allow my bus to move up to five miles per hour and come to a complete stop. When the bus comes to a complete stop, I should not move left or right. The bus came to a complete stop. It did not move left or right, indicating that the service brake is working properly. I will now put the bus in a neutral rest position. Putting the bus in neutral, via the transmission panel and taking my foot off of the service brake, I will allow the bus to find level ground. After your bus finds level ground, you will then prepare to conduct the must pass section or the lab, the leak test, low alarm test, and the brake response test. Before you can do any of these tests, you must allow the bus to reach its max air pressure. 
max air pressure is between 120 and 140 psi. Once the bus reaches its max air pressure, the governor will cut off, indicating that the bus has reached its max. Now that you have allowed your bus to reach max air pressure, verify that everything is in place as it should be. The bus is in neutral, the parking brake is disengaged, which just means down, and the bus is at 120 and 140 PSI. From here, you can continue to do your leak test. Using the master switch, you will turn the bus completely off, two clicks to the left. You will then turn it back on, two clicks to the right. Once the bus is back on, you will check to make sure that your gauges are stabilized. The speedometer may go up and down twice. After the gauges have stabilized, put your foot on the service brake. Putting your foot on the service brake stabilizes the air pressure gauge. Once the air pressure gauge stabilizes, you can then pull out your timing device. A phone, stopwatch, your regular watch, or anything else that keeps time. For one minute, you will put your foot on the service brake and hold it. During this minute, you should not lose more than 3 PSI and you should not hear any audible leaks. You will tell the tester when you're starting your time. Once the minute has passed, Take your foot off of the service brake and tell the tester you did not hear any audible leaks and you did not lose more than 3 psi. Moving on to the low alarm warning test. You will pump the brakes to the air pressure drops to at or above 55 psi. When the air pressure drops to at or above 55 psi, the low air alarm warning light should pop up on the telltale panel. Once the alarm light comes on, you can take your foot off the service brake. Let the tester know that the low air alarm warning system is working properly. You can also verify that the low alarm system is working properly if your air pressure gauge is above 55 PSI. You can now move on to the brakes response test. You will continually pump the brakes again until the air pressure drops to at or around 40 PSI. When the air pressure gets to at or around 40 PSI, the parking brake will engage itself. You can conduct that test whenever you're ready. Once the parking brake engages itself, you can take your foot back off of the surge brake and let the tester know that the brake response system is working properly. You will next ask the tester to test your lights. You will turn on your hazards your high beams and open the door for the tester. The tester will then go outside and after the test is complete, you can go to the engine compartment to proceed on to part number three of your pre-trip exam. I will look under the rear of the bus for any colored fluids or puddles that may indicate a leak. Opening up the compartment door to the engine, I will now can check the engine components. My water coolant reservoir has fluid above the ad line. The oil and dipstick has fluid above the ad line. The power steering reservoir also has fluid above the ad line. All of the engine cables, wires, and hoses are not leaking air or fluids. As we move along the side of the bus, we will begin to check the diesel tank and def tanks. 
The def tank, if equipped, is securely mounted, not damaged or leaking, and the cap is tight. The diesel fuel tank and hoses are securely mounted, not damaged or leaking, and the cap is tight. The frame and cross members of the entire bus are not bent, broken, cracked, loose, or missing. The steering inspection will be conducted behind the front driver's panel. The power steering box is securely mounted and not damaged or leaking. It's not missing any nuts or bolts. The power steering hoses are not cut, cracked, or frayed, or leaking. The steering linkage is not worn, damaged, cracked, loose, or missing any nuts, bolts, or cotter pins. The steering linkage consists of the links, arms, rods, joints, and sockets. The batteries are securely mounted and not damaged with no corrosion. All connections are present and not damaged. We will now move on to the front axle. The tire is evenly worn. The sidewalls are not cut, cracked, missing any rubber, or have any bulges. There is no less than 4 30 seconds of an inch of tread in the tread depth. You will check the tread depth with a depth gauge. The valve stem and cap is securely mounted. It is not bent or leaking. And you will check the tire pressure with a tire pressure gauge. The valve stem is also clearly accessible. The rim is securely mounted, not bent, broken, cracked, and has no illegal welds. The lug nuts are not loose or missing. There are no rust streaks that would indicate a loose nut. The bolt holes are not cracked or distorted, and the studs are not bent or damaged. The airbag mounts are securely mounted and not damaged. The nuts and bolts are not loose or missing. The bus is level from front to back and side to side. The airbags, the shocks are both securely mounted, not damaged or leaking. The brake hose fittings are also securely mounted, not damaged or leaking. And the brake hose is securely mounted, not cut, cracked or frayed or leaking. The brake drum and lining are free of any oil and grease. The entry door and glasses are securely mounted, not damaged and clean. The entryway is not worn and free of any trip hazards. The handrails are securely mounted, not damaged or missing. At this point, please start the engine of the bus and then continue. Two clicks to the right and hold down the push button till the engine starts. The seats and seat mounts of the bus are securely mounted, not damaged or missing any parts. There are three types of emergency exits on the bus. Overhead hatches, windows, and doors. An alarm should sound if any one of these are open when the bus is running. Each emergency exit is also equipped with proper labeling. You do not have to operate the wheelchair ramp for the test, but we will explain it. Open up the lift cover and turn the toggle switch down to kneel the bus. Once the bus is fully kneeled, turn the wheelchair ramp on. After it's on, turn the switch to the right in order to deploy the wheelchair ramp. Turn it back left in order to stow it. Once it's properly stowed, raise the bus to its original position.